Well, after a lot of um, to and fro, and I decided in the end to glass these panels, so I've, I've put a light cloth on there and epoxy. I've spread a bit of filler around. You might see it sanding back the epoxy filler. Um, yeah, yeah, there was anything where there was a gap, I filled it, so that's got to be sanded next. But at least I've glassed both sides of this, it's ready to go. Looking good, so that's sealed and nothing can go wrong there. That's ready. You can see the very front bulkhead laid there on the stem, so we're getting a bit of a collection. Um, the bulkheads are starting to get bigger. If you walk this way, Hazel. You can see that here I've milled the, the lumber roughly for the next bulkhead, uh, next frame, the number two frame. Um, and you can see it's starting to get bigger. Next one along. Number three is a bulkhead, so it's, it's a solid ply wall with a, with a doorway in it, but that's going to be really big. It sits the full height, it's over six feet high, um, getting towards two meters high, not quite, um, and much wider, so they're getting big. And the next, after that, the next seven are big frames, so they'll have to be worked entirely in here. I don't think I'll get them through the doorway into my little shed there. So, this is the uh, Station 2 frame, it's getting quite large as you can tell, I've just glassed the panel in the bottom there. Um, so that's drying at the moment, looking nice and glossy. Um, other than that it's very similar to the Station 1 frame except that it's, it's quite a bit bigger. Um, so same method of construction with the, the slots and the harbing joints at the bottom, panel in there glassed webs at the top here. One thing you might notice there is that the deck beam doesn't go all the way across. Um, the reason for that is that there's a, a four deck hatch comes in exactly there. So um, I will screw a piece of wood across there just to support it temporarily but I didn't need to make the full length of deck beam. Um, and that's where we are with that one. It's once the other side is glassed, at the moment only one side is glassed, but once the other side is glassed uh, I'll put the battens along there to support the bunk along the top of the ply panel that is. A uh, little bit of filler around about here and there and then that's that one done. And what I'm about to do now is to go out into the boat shed and uh, loft out the Station 3 bulkhead which is getting to be quite a big bulkhead um, and quite an intricate bulkhead because it's it's where the it steps up to the full height coach roof after it and, and forwards of it is uh, the fore deck which is lower so it's got quite a few different lines in it so that's what I'm about to go and do that's the last look at the station 2 frame um, so that's getting towards completion now so I've lofted out the what will be the major bulkhead for, uh, that comes at Station 3. It's basically speaking the wall that comes between the, the cabin, the, the, you know, the living quarters and the fore cabin where you're going to sleep, where we're going to sleep. Uh, so it's quite a big bulkhead with a sort of a hatchway in it that you can crawl through into the fore cabin. Um, I've marked it out in, in dark brown I think, <laughs> here on the, on the on the boards and it's fairly involved. Uh, the coach roof has a different curve to it than the fore deck, so this is my template for the coach roof, marked out from the plans, and I've used that to draw the line of the coach roof, coach roof the curve of the coach roof there. Okay, the return, it's a full width coach roof, raised deck as it's called, so the return of it comes down like that, as you can see you get that all from the from the plans, from the table of offsets, from the lofting lines. Here's the curve for the fore deck, so there will have to be a fore deck beam so that the fore deck can rest on the front side of, the, of, of this bulkhead, obviously supports the fore deck. The aft side of the bulkhead, of this bulkhead supports the raised deck. So we've got that beam coming on the top, another beam coming on the middle there, obviously with the, with the hole there for the hatch to come through. A bit of a cold. I've marked out the hatch with some radiuses on the corner, 
because sharp corners are always points of concentrated stress, so we're going to curve the corners because this is, this is a major structural member as well. Um, so we don't want any concentrated stress points. Curve the corners off. I'll cut them out like that. Um, I've marked, obviously on the fore side of it, it's got to have a, a batten to support the top of the bunk. Support the bunk board, so that's marked on there. I've also marked the height of the floor in the cabin, which at this stage is only just above the, the, the bottom of this bulkhead. So I marked the floor height all the way through the cabin, so I know the height of my floor beams. At this stage, they're quite thin, as you can see, but later on, they get quite thick. Um, so that's all that's on this. So I've got, I've got that, I'll say, the, the whole bulkhead marked out, I've got the floor marked on it, I've got the water line marked on it, I've got the bunk top marked on it, I've got the hatchway marked out there to crawl through, I've got the four deck beam marked on it, and I've got the raised deck beam marked on it. Uh, also, the curve that will be as a hatch comes on the fore deck, a raised hatch, and also the curve for that is marked on it, the width of the hatch, and I'm going to curve the, curve the top of the hatch. I'm going to, I think I'm going to use a, a balked hatch, I'm not going to build a beautiful traditional hatch, I'm going to use a balked flat hatch, I think, and fit that onto the raised hatch on the fore deck. So it's quite an involved piece. Obviously it will have battens around the edges for the hole to fit to. Uh, the first of the floor beams at the bottom. Yeah, but there it is. What I'll do now is I'll lay a sheet of plywood on here. The width is actually almost exactly the width of a sheet of plywood. So, well, the length of a sheet of plywood is, um, I think it's a few millimetres wider, but I'll get away with that. With, the, with my, just the, you know, the battens that come up the side can cover that. Um, and it's higher than one sheet of plywood is wide, so I'll have to join two pieces together to get this whole bulkhead out of there, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Yeah, that's it. It's quite, quite a bit of thought went into this bulkhead marking, um, but I think it's right. Let's hope. So I've, I've taken a sheet of Plywood, it's a full sheet, and I've laid it down on top of that lofted bulkhead on the lofting lines. I've lined the bottom of the sheet up with the floor line that I've drawn on the bulkhead. So it's the, the line that will be the floor in the cabin. Uh, so the bottom of the, the sheet is the same line, so exactly with that. And as you can see, I've drawn a centre line, which is the station line, I've drawn the centre line up. Sheet and mark it as um, And the next stage is to, <coughs> to notice is I can see the, the projection of the side line here, and the sheet is nearly wide enough for this bulkhead. It sticks out like well, is that six, eight millimeters, not much. So um, that would be enough to uncover that with a frame. So basically, I can see that line there. And extend my spirit level. So I get that on that line there, and there. Okay, that's right there, that's right there. One more check, like that. I can draw those lines in. That will be the side of the boat there. Just extend that along. This is the inside of the hull. And I've allowed for the fact that, the, again, that the, because the, the hull's curving in there, that, that this side will actually be an, an angle, so I've allowed a bit extra for that. So that's that one side. I'll do the same with this side. That's the side line there, look. And we'll extend the spirit line up there like that. And you get that line on there, that's right, that's correct there. Good. Lovely. Get that line there, through there. There we go. So, so far that's it. That's the first thing I'll cut. I'll take this onto my table saw now. Or perhaps I'll do it with the, with the hand power saw. Circle this saw. Um, I'll cut that shape. And come back in, lay it on the lofting lines again. 
obviously I've got to join another board on the here and I shall, um, so I shall cut out another piece there and join the two together um, and I shall do a, a kind of biscuit joint on that uh, so I'll take the router and I'll cut the groove in the edge of this board and the groove in the edge of the other board and I'll put a, a tongue in there and glue them all together then we've got to cut out this part for the, for the doorway for the whatever it is hatchway through to the fore cabin um, and that's what we'll do next I could even mark will mark where those four carry lines come while I put it in position. It'll come down there like that. The depth I'll have to measure. Sort of stick that way now. Line that up. Nice and straight. It's going to come down there like that. That's good. 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 That's and I'll cut it, I'll use the, the hand set for the saw, it'll be easier. So I'm lugging this into the table saw. I just want to show you something because this is that ply panel that I've just cut. Um, I know there'll be people who think I'm utterly mad building with exterior grade pine ply. Um, just firstly, have a look at this. I don't know if we can zoom in enough to see that, can we? It's fine. Zoom in there. Focus, come on camera, focus. Uh, is it going to focus for us? Doesn't look like it, is it? Oh, let's try it. Here we go, here we go. Come on, a bit better, a bit better. Well, it's not focused, is it? What I want to say is I've just cut that piece of ply and there is not one single void in that ply. It is absolutely perfect. And it's the same the other side. Cut both sides. And if you can find a piece of plywood like that, voids in, there's no gaps in the plies. When you cut it through, there's no holes to be seen. If you can find a piece of ply like that, that's exterior grade, that is as good as you can get. Yeah, okay, you can spend a lot more money for tropical hardwoods that will probably last a bit longer. But the tropical hardwoods, you're chopping down tropical forest to make it. This is no justification. There's no justification. This is locally grown, it's European grown, and it's perfect. Look at the top as well. It, there is not a single, this is the good side obviously, there's not a single void to be seen. That is marvellous. And it kept me, you know, covered in epoxy. Here's the other side. Let's see if we can get in on that. Focus a bit better, isn't it? Again, there is not one single void in there. Now, I've worked with Luan, which comes from the Philippines mainly. Um, and when you cut that, the stuff I worked with, horrible, horrendous, horrendous, full of gaps, full of layers squashed together, and really not fit to be called plywood. It's, it's terrible. Um, I'm sure, you know, if you want to spend 100 euro a sheet or 120 euro a sheet or whatever, you can get better quality stuff. But as I say, it will be tropical. You're not doing the planet any good. And uh, this stuff is as good as it gets. Marvellous. And I can't see any justification for not using it. There will be people who disagree, no doubt. I don't give a damn. So just tied it up here after a bit of um, pieces out on. 
So I've cut these pieces here. These are the two pieces that will form that bulkhead. Um, in the top I've cut with the router, I've cut a slot in there. And I've got these two tongues of 6mm fly laid there. Next step is I'm going to put some epoxy in the groove here. Put the tongue in there and put obviously a groove on the bottom of this piece. And that will fit. Actually, get the other way around there. You see, you don't need that, they'll fit on there like that. So we'll glue that all up. Um, that's going to be laid out on there. I'll put some plastic sheet down as usual to stop it sticking. And that's that one ready to go. A whole load of tools laid about, a bit of a mess. Then, if you wander through this way, Hazel, let's go through to the other shade, shall we? Do with me. Let's run. Here, pretty good. And you see here, this is the number two station frame. Um, a couple of two battens that go on there to the bunk to rest on to glass. It's filled one side, that side is filled and complete. This side, waiting for a bit of filler here and there, just one or two bits. I've got a rough sand on the glass in, so that looks okay, flat enough. Those two battens will be glued on. I'll put a little bit of filler where it's needed on this side at the same time. So I'm now ready for a big gluing session. I'm going to glue those up and glue those on, fill and glue those two sections of ply together for the bulk. Excuse me, for the bulkhead. Um, that's where we are. About to mix up. <laughs> 